May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The interesting thing about religion is God. That's the title I've been given for today's sermon. The interesting thing about religion is God. Well, apart from the fleeting temptation to ask what we mean by interesting, religion and possibly God, the slightly rebellious side of me, when presented with a statement that one can only affirm, is to try and think of all those other things that are more interesting about religion than God. As a teenager, there was the presence of several similarly aged girls in church, including my first girlfriend. Religion took on a special interest then. That was interesting. When the vicar in that church fell out with the church wardens and excommunicated them, he refused to give them communion. Well, that was interesting. On some of my travels, as when the women of the Santali tribe in Bangladesh greeted me by anointing my feet with oil, or the young people of the South Sudan church in the refugee camps of northern Uganda danced a welcome singing, It's so good to see you. Or the churches of India garlanded me and threw petals before my feet. Religion was interesting then. And by the way, I'm disappointed that in my visits to the churches around Bedfordshire, there tend to be no petals and no garlands. Only joking. And I could go on. My life of faith has been a great many interesting moments as I've experienced the highs and lows, the joys and sorrows of being a follower of Jesus Christ. But when it comes down to it, it's hard to disagree that the interesting thing about religion is God. God who is the beginning and end of all things, who is the source of life from whom all that is truly of interest flows. The interesting thing about religion is God. But why is God interesting? That is apart from being a dog backwards, particularly when I was young, I found that interesting. Well, I want to explore this first by considering the word religion. One of the oft-repeated derivations of the word religion is that it derives from the Latin word ligare, to bind or connect. Religare is therefore to bind or connect again. Religion is that which binds together, connects us, connects us in the sense of shared identity, shapes us in the sense of shared purpose. To share religion is to be connected, connected to God, connected to one another. Why is God interesting? Because in God we find three bindings, three connectings, three ligare that are profound and eternally true. The first ligare is that narrative of purpose and meaning that takes what would otherwise be random and uncertain and gives it essential identity. It's that narrative of grace, of love and adoption of which Ephesians speaks. It's the grace of God that, as Ephesians puts it, God has freely given us in the one he loves that is his unconditional, freely given and overflowing mercy to us, that takes us as we are, that says that life is a gift to be treasured and received. It's the love of God that first loves us, that says each one of you is precious and of infinite value, a loved being that is called to be one who loves others. It's that image of adoption, 
the words, a legal word that relates to the legal adoption in Roman culture that says, whatever life is like for you, however good or grotty it is, God receives you as his child. We can know who we are in the ultimate binding, that eternal connecting with our Heavenly Father. Now that's interesting. The second ligare is that connecting of heaven and earth. It's the hope of the kingdom, which is of heaven, but seen in part on earth. Ephesians uses that image of being marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. The Spirit is a down payment of the fullness of the kingdom. Tom Wright, in his writings about the kingdom and about hope, repeatedly stresses this connection. He writes, Easter was when hope in person surprised the whole world by coming forward from the future into the present. Or to give a different image, some years ago I took the funeral of a retired priest. I saw him in hospital just before he died. His daughter told me I would find him in the bed overlooking Bedford Rugby Club. And so I did. A view out of the window which allowed you to see about a quarter of the rugby pitch. Speaking at his funeral, I used that image. He could only see a quarter of the pitch, but he could be certain the whole pitch was there. I spoke of the kingdom of God, of which we only see a part, but a part that is a guarantee of the whole. We see selfless love in others, a sign of the greater and abundant love of the kingdom. It is that connecting of earth and heaven, of all creation joined in the glory of God. Now that's interesting. And the third and final ligari. Ephesians talks of God in Christ bringing unity to all things in heaven and on earth. It's a binding, a connecting in God that is related to but distinct from our previous point. Read the New Testament carefully and we discover that God's reconciling and redeeming purposes are not just for human beings, but for the whole of creation. It's those biblical bookends that start in Genesis with a fall and end in the book of Revelation with a new heaven and a new earth. It's that narrative of redemption that is far more than personal salvation alone. It's that binding of one another that makes the common purpose of the renewal of creation and the task of righteousness central to our purpose. It's a connecting that makes the present urgency about the state of our world the impact of melting ice caps, disappearing forests and global temperature rise. Not just a human crisis, but a gospel crisis. It's why as Christians, we are to be at the forefront of environmental care and simple lifestyle. And if we're honest, we have quite a way to go. It is to be partners with God in his work of redeeming all things in heaven and on earth. Now that is interesting. Why is God interesting? Ephesians speaks of the God who loves us, redeems us, adopts us, commissions us, the God in whom we have our being. Many today struggle with who they are, what's their identity? Does life have ultimate meaning? Are we inevitably the victims of climate change and environmental degradation? For some, the questions are, so, are too deep and are blanked out. For others, they lead to crisis and despair. Yet in God, those three ligare 
those three bindings, draw us in, a connecting within a greater narrative of grace and love and adoption, a binding within a promise of God's kingdom and a new creation, a reality of a call to redemption of all creation within which we can be partners. Now that is God. Now that is interesting.